Hey guys, welcome you for Khan Academy. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to give an explanation on so how to use diagnostics in real time. Yes. So far, I have uh, seen the queries and, and comment section as well as in my personal mail. Uh, people are asking like how they are going to use because uh, so far I'm explaining only on uh, using diagnostic uh, service ID but um, they have a confusion like how to use because some people are working already but some people are studying on that some people are doing some course on that so but even people who are working also they're blindly working where the, the end product will be used by how so this was the question uh, raised by many of the people i have discussed so far so in this video i'm going to give a clear explanation on how to how they are using the diagnostic service in real-time applications yes so uh, this is what uh, these are all just for the ECU. See, uh, these are all the diagnoster that is tester in a real time workshop or um, the manufacturing unit. People are working like this. So, before getting to that, so I'm just giving you uh, an overall review on how, how many ECUs are present. That is, ECUs are present, and number of ECUs are present year by year. The ECU is also increasing. See here, I am giving some major issue which is present in all cars because uh, not every car have uh, same issues because it depends on end to higher end to lower end. For example, if you are think of these uh, uh, higher end vehicle like BMW, Benz, Audi, uh, Ferrari, Lamborghini, these kind of higher end vehicles have many issues, that is, at most issues. So those issues uh, can be tested by flex ray tool instead of can so those things we will uh, look upon on next uh, upcoming tutorials so as of now in this video tutorial just uh, get to know what are the easy use what are the common easy use are using so i'll start with battery management cluster and heads up so in battery management it used to uh, that that is used to control uh, what, whether the battery is charging and discharging properly whether the supply from the battery is going to other parts of the all other parts of the uh, car like uh, AR, uh, AC light uh, horn like that then uh, like uh, front view camera system integrated lighting system blind spot detection HVAC control panel and blower so these are all let's see these kind of air suspension rear camera secure gateway uh, tire pressure monitoring system seat control infotainment window lift emergency system so oil fuel water a pump so these are all one of the major major factor like these are all not as uh, if, if you are considered as a single ecu it this it doesn't mean it is a very small unit these are all like for, so for example infotainment infotainment is one of the broad ocean like uh, same uh, rear camera these are all the people are working projects like infotainment rear camera engine coolant fan battery management system so like uh, these are all these these are these are all the part of the ECUs. As there are a number of ECUs, so these are all the single part. So th these are all the as of now just uh, understand these are all the ECUs. So in real time application, how these people are going to uh, use these ECUs? So in these EC in these uh, ECUs, I'm just going to pick only these three ECU. So I'm going to explain how to test the, these three ECUs with example because uh, I got um, comments and uh, queries like. Can you please explain with uh, that particular service ID with example? So once if I am giving you this explanation, we don't want to uh, focus on particular service ID. Once if you clear on this concept, then what are the service ID we are, we are going to explain? So we can easily map with how they are going to use in their real time application. Yes. So battery management system, smart rear camera, tire pressure monitoring system. These are all the three modules I'm going to discuss how they are using in the real time. Yeah, for example now uh, see this is a BMW vehicle and uh, so in this vehicle so as I as shown in this uh, slide uh, battery management so uh, now we will start with the battery management in this BMW uh, vehicle so the issue in battery battery management issue we are going to test so it has some defect uh, this battery management have some defects so uh, test testing tester coming to the picture so how the tester is to test so so how the communication will happen so this is the ECU okay so now I'll start with the step-by-step -step process 
so the first step is once uh, if if you are a tester or if you are a programmer if you are a developer for the particular ecu so you will just adopt with session diagnose session whichever session you can do like for example if you want to do basic operations like uh, basic op operations it depends on the oem for example in some oem uh, read ddc will be the basic operation in some oem write uh, write data by identifier is a basic operation it depends so you are uh, just in diagnostic session if you are work if you want to work with the basic uh, basic thing you have to enter uh, through default mode that is not an issue or if you want to add some programming if you want to upload something you have to do for the programming session or if you want to use some other additional tools we have to go for extended session so these are all these uh, session control we can use so once for example say uh, now i am going to use some basic operation so i am going to use with uh, uh, diagn uh, default session then in step 2 security access yes okay of course i am using uh, default session but uh, i am going to use some confidential information so i am going to give an uh, because in the battery say consider it's a battery this battery will work on all these sessions like uh, default session extended session as well as programming session so i am entering to the programming session uh, then i am going to give a security access because in some uh, if you want to enter into second step so in this oem specific you want to enter something so you, you want you want to make sure you have as uh, authorized so you have to use a security access so i am going to give a security access those things uh, and one more thing is whenever if you are completed the previous tutorial then it is very easy to understand these things if you are not gone through the previous tutorial it's somewhat bit difficult to uh, catch the points okay so as per as per what we how we discussed like in security text we are giving uh you are requesting for seed then you are requesting for key then we we are unlocking the ecu so at the same here you are uh, first you are entering to the again default session then giving security access it unlocked successfully and then why you want to unlock because you want to read ddc what is read ddc information this read ddc information we have not uh, seen in our tutorial probably in our next video tutorial we'll be going to see the read ddc information yes so once you want to once you want to read the uh, trouble codes diagnostic trouble code so you want you want to uh, use security access as per this oem what we are assuming it is not um, uh, it is not a mandatory to use security access for all the read ddc some some read ddc if uh, some for example if some maruti suzuki or honda they are giving a specification like for reading ddc you don't want any security access means the step two you don't want to use and i hope you are understood then step four yes once you once you read once you read the diagnostic trouble code you are trying to reset the ecu yes you reset it then again again try to read the same dtc whether the same dtc is available or not okay so here some people may have the doubts what what would be the uh, information stored in the dtc first of all dtc means diagnostic trouble code for example in battery management in the battery management the battery output battery is uh, say um, for example if for some x ohm it need to give as a output but it is not giving as a x ohm it is it is exceeding x plus 1 ohm okay so that is the diagnostic trouble code so that x plus 1 ohm will be converted into a diagnostic trouble code and stored into the ecu then whenever you are giving the command for read dtc that code will reflect in the dtc status then whenever you are reading that code then you can map with the requirement like this code will indicate the excess of power discharge so like that you have to map with the diagnostic trouble code once you are mapping with the diagnostic trouble code we can you can easily identify why the where where the problem is and what is the occurrence of the particular problem then test step present so you you need to analyze some other uh, things like whether you need to refer something for the diagnostic trouble code or you need to uh, do some other uh, task but you you will not uh, ready to communicate with the ecu at the time you can here you can use test at present as we discussed already if you are not available to communicate with ecu you can use test at present then communication protocol so uh, uh, see the entire scenario is uh, is purely a um, just an imagination factor i am giving here okay because 
imagination factors like these kind of steps they have to follow okay so in test step present after test step present communication control so what is communication control that also we have discussed in our previous tutorial yes in communication control we are just uh, giving we are just enabling rx disabling tx or disabling rx or enabling rx to find exactly where the defect is anyhow we are getting the dtc diagnostic trouble code as we have some problem trouble code so still if you want to get a clear clarity on trouble uh, on where the trouble code exists so we can uh, give like uh, we can enable on signal can disable on signal so we can we can we can easily get uh, the way of where the trouble occurs then control dtc settings so this is also i uh, have shared, uh, shared in the previous tutorial the control dtc for uh, for DTC, that is diag uh, the diagnostic trouble code settings can change like on and off. Only the two sub functions it have on and off. So once you want to set set uh, once you want to set the DTC, for example, hmm, say uh, I said x x ohm is a, x ohm should be the output. If you are getting x plus one ohm, it should it, it is it is a uh, it is kind of uh, DTC it be stored. So in that case, you can control the particular DTC. Uh, by giving some input value like uh, I need x minus one one ohm result. So uh, in that case, we can get whether what kind of DTC is giving whether it is giving DTC or not. First of all, if it is giving DTC, it is a confirmed. Confirmed means some defect is there. If it is not confirmed, it means there is no defect. Uh, not confirmed means pending. The another state is pending. So confirmed means there is a defect. Pending means there will not be a defect. This is one kind of uh, contrast statement in this diagnostics understanding and one more thing is historic historic and uh, confirm historic means the problem was there but now it was not there it was resolved so historic so that's what control dtc is running then write data so that is here i have not mentioned write data by identifier write data by address like that so we can as i said the control dtc setting we can write n x minus one or x minus two like that so you can write whatever uh, you are your calibration that depends on the tester calibrations independent your uh, intention is to find the defect okay, so you, you can write your own thing so as the same a developer concept so if you are uh, troubleshooting something if you are expecting some result to be implemented so you can give your own value to check what is the response and behavior then clear diagnostics information once if you are get to know what are the problems or if you once if you fix those problems by writing the data you can give the clear diagnostic information that means what are the dtc what are the diagnostic trouble code stored in the ecu once you give the clear diagnostic information everything will be cleared how the ecus are fine to work that is the clear diagnostic information so next is security access so why is security access needed again again you may uh, use some confidential keys like uh, yeah easy reset so once you are uh, once you're done with the clear diagnostics information so as how we are rebooting our pc or laptop same way once you did some major modification in ecu you have to reset the particular ecu then you have to observe the behavior whether it is working fine or not so this is how the real time scenario how you want to check in that uh, particular ecu so this is just um, uh, this outline I, I gave in the next video I am giving you the quick uh, I will just give you these 12 steps in a quick uh, command like how to send from the uh, ECU uh, and sorry uh, from the tester to ECU and the response from ECU to tester or client so those things I will give you for uh, three parameters like battery uh, battery management then um, uh, tire, the tire monitoring system and one more thing is rear camera so these three things how people are working in the real time scenario i'll give you in the uh, after a couple of videos because the next video would be on some read dtc then routine control then followed with that i will just uh, start i will just continue with this part so please if you like this video please like and subscribe my channel for more updates just share to your friends to explore more please write on your comments and doubts in the comments or uh, can also mail me thank you see you in next video bye